press that button. <clears throat> we're recording. We're recording the episode <laughs> rolling, of the show rolling, that we're rolling. on right now. Talking, talking, talking. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Okay. Air, Air Raid Remix, right? Is that it? No, yeah. The, the, rolling, rolling, rolling. It was the Air Raid me- Remix. What was the Air Raid Remix? Of Roland. That's the one that he they did the video at the Twin Towers for, right? Yeah. That's Don't what it's that. called. <laughs> welcome welcome to the Chapo Trap House episode for Indigenous People's Day. Oh, yes. We will be talking about the Air Raid Siren remix. Of the only, Roland. The only version of Roland that replaces all the original backing vocal tracks with Air Raid Sirens to satisfy people who are into in the Air Raid Siren community who have been tracking the evolution of sound efficiency, range, and something that they call coning. An audio, an audio phenomenon only existing in air raid sirens. <laughs> um, you know, air raid sirens, as far as autistic fixations go, are one of the more interesting ones to me. And one I could imagine getting into because the classic air raid siren, it's an analog instrument. It's not, it, it yeah, is. You can like you, crank it you, with you, a, it's yeah, a crank. Like it's a crank. you just pull a crank and it makes this hugely loud noise. How does it do that? What, what's going on? How does it do that? I don't know. I would like to find out. Well, it's um, everyone knows about dibbocks and golems. Those are the two basic <laughs> Jewish monsters and creatures of lore. That's true. This is Felix's new interest. <laughs> yeah. So we're launching a new Felix interest this week. It's uh, Jewish folklore. Uh, oh, I've, this, I've, I've this, always been. Is into this, this a slippery slope, though? Are we gonna have? Are we gonna have a bar mitzvah when you turn thirty three? No, <laughs> no. I actually, I did a different thing. Um, there's actually a lot of lore about this. Uh, dibbocks. <laughs> Well, like there is a Yu-Gi-Oh type thing that happens between <laughs> all the factions of Jews. And of course, the Orthodox and ultra-Orthodox, they get the Gollum. So that's the <laughs> oldest one. Uh, Reformed Jews who are more typically represented in finance, media, and, you know, like the college professions, right? We're in those. We get the Dybbuk. It's a more complicated monster. What do you get if you're a conservative Jew, which is sort of like in the middle, you know, Oftentimes you can, you know, you can have an email job if you're a conservative Jew, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's like, uh, oh, I work for a nonprofit called the Jewish Judaism Center, you know. Um, well, they, you wear they a yarmulke, but not to the beach. That no, guy. yeah, yeah. They get they get the uh, mentaculus, and they can. There's a variety <laughs> of monsters that you can cast out of there, so they're sort of a hybrid class. Yeah, it's the Necronomicon of Judaism. Yeah. And we've been doing their underground duel, monster duels between all the factions of Judaism. And the Reform have been the strongest. The Dybbuk is um, a very strong monster. But um, there's a fourth monster. And it's just it's just a little guy. And he's the guy in the air raid siren. And when you (laughs) crank the handle, it grinds up like little treats for him. And if he gets if he gets enough crumbs, he'll make the air raid noise. (laughs) And there are several different types of this little, little, little guy. Um, that's why all of them sound different. Uh, the Dybbuk is a, it's a good, it's a good battle monster because uh, for, for the damage it, it, it deals out, it restores HP on itself. Exactly. Yeah. There's a siphon effect. Yes. It's very good. You clearly, clearly grew up on the Upper West Side. <laughs> familiar with these battles that go on yeah i I, this is this is not ip that i grew up with at all i'm not familiar with this ip there were none of these in manitowoc no manitowoc (laughs) nope no 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 the the golem the golem's a classic strength build but it's not very versatile yeah no i mean like you get a really good golem can beat an average dibbic but like if the average dibbic has a very good trainer the dibbic's probably going to win yeah that's just obvious Oh, welcome. Welcome, friends. It's Monday, October 10th. Uh, start things off. I'll say uh, thanks again to everyone who came out to our L.A. show. It was a triumph. Wonderful. Thanks to uh, L.A. Witch, Tim Heidecker, and uh, candidate Hugo Soto Martinez. We gave him his biggest office. Uh, no, sorry, his biggest audience. <laughs> his biggest story of four of Well, it was his biggest office in a way. His biggest audience uh, about a month before Election Day, so... Well, I mean, I'm sure that was good fun for him, but it's not. I don't think it's been anywhere as near as fun as the last yeah. couple of hours have been. The, <laughs> yeah, last the LA day and City and a half. Council oh is killing God. it. Wow, <laughs> that was like literally like ten hours after our show. 
<laughs> yeah. And they, 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 the recordings are 10 hours of uh, unedited racism. <laughs> Those recordings are awesome. <laughs> They're so good. Uh, uh, but, I, I, I just, I like how often on those recordings there are like, it, it's like classic filmmaking. There's so many times where it's like, you're like, oh, are they on the verge of saying something really awful? And then they just jump right in. They're like, oh, his kid's a monkey. <laughs> it's like, oh, holy shit. They, they, what they say? They said Mike Bun- Mike Bunnan's kid is being raised like a like he's a being white raised kid. like a white kid. You can't do that with <laughs> yeah. black kids. That was the implication. Yeah, yeah. And then okay. And then Matt, as you said, uh, they're 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 really stepping in it because they were going after Armenians yeah. in L.A. They yeah. said one guy has one eyebrow and it's like, I don't well, know how, what his what's name? his name last? I would know what his name was. Let me guess. It ends with I A N. That t- I listen. They do be loving that. I have to say the Armenians. Yeah, they love. Yeah, no, they, that's they're not giving that up. Um. I did listen to the Armenian tape, obviously, and they were actually that was one of the few tapes where like they liked the guy they were talking about. <laughs> but they still had to pitch. Well, they still had to like make fun of him yep. for being <laughs> Armenian. But like they were talking about, you know, the one guy, the guy in the tape with the nasal voice. I forget what his name is because I've blocked everyone who's tried to tell me about local politics. I'm not finding out. Um, the guy who like when the uh, Kevin DeLeon and Nuri, whatever, when they're trying to be racist, he's always trying to steer it back. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, the, the Jerry monomandering we have to do, uh, or like, yeah, this, okay. Uh, yeah. Enough of this racism. Uh, right. We got to fix these elections. He's like, guys, this is really funny, but we have to do election fraud. Yeah, we, we, yeah. Have, to, we have to, we have to gerrymander Nithya Raman's district out of existence. So that yeah. We don't deal with her anymore. So he was like, um, he was talking about how like, you know, some like LA politics scumbag has helped him out in the past and how they like this guy. And they're all like, yeah, we like this Armenian guy, but his eyebrows are ugly. He's Armenian. <laughs> eyebrow. Yeah, his yeah, eyebrow. eyebrow. It's it's just it's always so comforting when stuff like this happens because it lets you know that it, at least at a certain level, it's never, it's exactly what you think it is. Like you're not really learning anything. That's the funny part when this stuff happens. Like, oh, what are they doing? Being racist and doing corruption? Yes, that's exactly what they're doing. Not any more complicated than that. Yeah, it shows that Veep in some ways is like still idealistic because it shows these people is like more clever than they actually mm-hmm. would be and exactly and, 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 it's like they're and, doing and, the veep stuff but with none of the snappy zingers and, like, and shit and yeah like, and it, but like but they're also just being straight up racist like on veep they were verbally abusive and it was, a, it was a, the creativity of the writing was like how to how to go with a way other than just someone's ethnicity yeah yeah because they're way too so likable yeah, yeah. still yeah because frankly folks that's the lazy track yeah that's what the mediocre mind does and these are the mo- most mediocre minds on earth and that is why a show like Veep is kind of propaganda for the regime. And the reason that Joe Biden liked it is because, yeah, you're showing them as vacuous and evil, but also look how clever they are. Look how funny they are and how attractive they are relative to the Dude, Selena, actual Selena dishwater, Meyer. the dishwater dull. Selena, Selena Meyer. Meyer. God, well, how does, Julie Louise Dreyfus is like has gotten comprehensively hotter the older she's gotten. And I'm saying like Elaine, all time dime. Selena Meyer. Oh boy! I think part of that boils down to us getting farther away from '90s fashion. Uh, I yeah, think that, yeah, and then that the was hair. a big yeah. uh, thing that hurt uh, Lane. Her giant the hair, uh, but who just knows? As we say, the culture is snapping back. We'll get to the '90s if we haven't already, and maybe. Yo. We'll look back and be like, think, "Damn, Elaine was fire in that fit." <laughs> think of Selena Meyer's body count, though. She was she was a hot <laughs> slut on that a show. Lot of guys on Hugh show. Laurie. John yeah. Slattery, yeah. Chris Maloney. Those mm-hmm. are just the three that come to mind. Uh, she fucks Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's yes, true. That's yes, she true. does. And then yeah. fires him the next day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, the, the, the Muhammad bin Sultan guy. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a babe. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but that, that, the reality, they're not even that, that good. They're not even well, that interesting. I don't think it's. Pr- I think Joe Biden liked it because he's stupid. <laughs> I think, like, that's not. He didn't, like, he didn't go, like, oh, um, you know, I'm I'm going to in, you know internalize all the bad things I've ever done. He just like saw a show and like got one third of the jokes and was like, oh hey, I've done that job, haha. I don't think I'm I like that show too much to call it regime propaganda. I think it's great, and it is also regime propaganda. I don't think he can separate the two. Frankly. I don't. Well, no. Okay, if that's regime propaganda, then like everything is. Well, there you go. Boom. Okay, well, Welcome I mean, to I'm, the yeah, that, that's hole. one way of looking Problem at things, solved. I guess. Welcome yeah. to the Adorno hole. Yeah. <laughs> You've been Adorno hole. Yeah. It's all fascism. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Uh, but that's the thing. Because that's true, I can evaluate it on a completely separate axis. Is it funny and do I enjoy it? Yes and yes. It's good. Is Terminator 2 propaganda? Uh, I mean, Cameron's always interesting, but like at a certain point, anything that's that big and that you all, you know, 
it's all gets knitted into a narrative of like reassurance that the system you live in is in some way just because it produces it. Yeah, what's the least propagandistic film? Is it like a Uwe Boll film? <laughs> Like, is it like the postal movie I where there's say, just like no plot? And he's like, oh, here's a new character I invented, a uh, guy who rapes his dad. I mean, have you seen Assault <laughs> on Wall Street movie. by Uwe Boll, uh, by the way? Wait, have you, what? Have you ever seen Assault on Wall Street by Uwe Boll? Yes. Or or the, uh, the not the first one, but the sequel to uh, Rampage where he takes hostages at a TV station? No. Uwe Boll, after, uh, after the 08 crash, decided, like, I'm going to basically be, like, if Ted Kaczynski made movies. And he makes, and it's, like, literally a guy, like, just reciting statistics about, you know, uh, uh, about, like, uh, who made money off after the, the financial collapse and then just shooting a room full of bankers. As I said, it is, like, and yet it has incited no copycat shooting. For some reason, that never sparks a flame in the real world. Is the media present? Uh, yeah, because the, because of the like, corporate headquarters of uh, yeah. Oxford United Healthcare. <laughs> yeah. Is, well, yeah, because like the type the type of person who commits murders in America is always like stupid. Yeah, <laughs> that's yep. really yep. like that's like if you look at like murders in other countries, it's always like a fucked up guy who is like of at least average intelligence, like the German guy who. Dude, most suicide yeah. bombers have advanced engineering degrees. Yeah. Whereas in America, it's usually guys who like we talked about how like yeah most murders are just like a guy killing his wife because he can't figure out who gets what Blu rays. <laughs> but that is that's like most murderers in America, and even when even when like they have been abused and their life has been ruined by like powers beyond them that that you think they could understand like health insurance or like their job or something, they're like oh I'm just I'm going to kill like uh, just nine versions of me. Well, that's just it. Is that murder? is an intimate act and and people who are going to respond to the, the horrors of their life violently are going to want to do it as you said because they're stupid intimately because they can't they're not going to be able to attach like uh, uh like real visceral emotionality to to some abstract enemy it's got to be someone who's who triggers something deeper in them which is why they love doing it for racist reasons well, for th example yeah that's why okay what is the least intimate industrialized country on earth? It's Japan. Mm -hmm. The only country where they actually killed like a guy that you yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because it all gets concentrated into one guy who's like, who needs to die for this and correctly recognizes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's the uh it's the uh puppet master of the deep state like NATO uh uh, uh Christ like right wing Christian uh propaganda uh do lodge that runs this fucking country yeah you the fucking and i'm gonna put, could, commit my will not to buying an ar-15 on the internet with a credit card i'm not gonna pay back <laughs> <laughs> instead uh i'm going to build a fucking science fair of a volcano myself <laughs> to blow this asshole away and then he and then what happens he actually gets like a change at a meaningful level whereas what do we do just a bunch of dumbasses who who order i want to satisfy all of my uh my deepest failures and, and and express all my pain uh by just having them s amazon send me a gun over the in the mail so i could just shoot somebody who triggers like the deepest thing and and like the real bad guys in this country are never going to trigger those because you have no intimate relations with these people they live in, behind the fucking uh, uh behind the walls and they live uh, uh ge like geographically right amongst us but because of the huge technological wall that money presents might as well be in a different dimension from us behind the green door that's where they live the, the, behind the green door the only way that like any executive will be killed in america any like real executive not for like a, a vitamin company you know that <laughs> yeah. doesn't count but like a real executive who makes like seven to eight figures is for like you know making a woke tv show yep. like a woke children's mm -hmm. tv yep. show on disney yep. for Plus. being a groomer yep, yeah that's it totally accidentally well, I think, uh, the, well, this is a good segue because uh, we got to talk. Uh, you know, like this, this is this is the story that's burning up the news right now. We've got to talk about the All Star Week that Mr. Kanye West has been having. He's, yeah. been, you know, okay. So it began, it began with a Tucker Carlson interview, a two a two part Tucker Carlson. Well, interview. it began, I believe, with his uh, fashion oh, line oh, yes, being yes. unveiled with a bunch of shirts that said "White Lives Matter." Yeah, he was at Paris Fashion Week with Candace Owens, and they were both wearing a Kanye branded T-shirts that said "White Lives Matter." And I don't think, like, I think only Gigi Hadid was shocked by this. I think the only way you can be shocked by this after like the last six years is if you, yeah, if you eat three hundred calories a day. But yeah, like that. I, when I first saw them, the clips from the Tucker Carlson interview were hilarious to me because it was just like I was trying to like trying to imagine what the Tucker Carlson audience would be getting out of Kanye talking about. You know, everyone's like, Anna Winter's your friend. I'm like, this Gabby girl, 
and Gigi and these people, um, they would have never said anything negative unless they got the okay from Condé Nast, unless they got the okay from Anna. Balenciaga is not a real fashion house. Anna Wintour didn't like my <laughs> boots. She was very mean to me. But then I realized, I was like, I was like, this is gibberish. To, and, like, and this is gibberish to me, let alone the fucking Mimas and Pep Peps watching this. But then I realized, Matt, you correctly pointed out, that like, thanks to Trump, like all that the, that audience Patty, now has totally imbibed all of the, who they know who Anna Wintour is because and they, of Trump and, and the and the and the register of like caddy media gossip yeah. is now one that they have wired into their great greater like you know political ideology their 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 oppression and resentment matrix it's all now wired into these totems because Trump taught them how to do it and so yeah they're like absolutely Mr West Anna Wintour she's very two faced <laughs> she was so she was so mean to our president uh, she wouldn't. She wouldn't put Melania on the cover of Vogue. That was a thing. That, that was, was a thing. Uh, yeah, 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 that was a that. thing. Did you see the? Uh, there was um, a reply to that video. Someone was saying like, "What is the Fox News you were getting out of this?" And it was just like you know one of those, um, one of those like you know conservative middle aged men with like a big square torso, who's just like wearing like a long sleeve polo shirt tucked in, like just <laughs> maximizing how shitty he can look. And he was like. All I see is an independent, intelligent leader of blacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like very well said. Uh, um, yeah, but I, don't, I, I feel like I, I think you I think you hit the nail on the head with uh, the, the Tucker interview where you said he stole Trump's whole flow. Yeah, no. And like but, they really, but, that's, but that's the thing. This is the next yes. stage of Trumpism. That's what I realized. Some of, if anybody, plenty of people have probably pointed this out before, and if they are, have, they're correct. But uh, and I'm sorry I'm late to the party, but just seeing this whole thing play out and seeing the way that his words provoke the media response and then the way <laughs> yep. people respond to that response, you see exactly what happened when Trump just decided to fucking uh, cannonball his ass into political discourse when he started with the birther stuff. It's the exact same trajectory. He says something outrageous that pushes liberal sensibilities that gets a pushback from the unified mainstream media, which is not some conspiracy, but is just a bunch of liberals acting like liberals. And then the response from the alienated Republicans and conservatives seeing how the liberals act and deciding this guy must be onto something, which pushes him further in the direction of in saying what they want to hear. Yeah. I mean, he's the next one. And if, like, if Trump, Trump is this celebrityification of politics. None of the Republicans can match him completely. Like we talked about DeSantis. DeSantis is all of that minus the thing that made it work. It's all of the, it's all of uh, the, the grievances turned into policy, but without the face, where's the face? And without Trump, there's nobody to come after him. And it's like, it's Kanye. It, it, he is well, okay. the one. Yeah. So, in, so in the Tucker interview, he said that he will be president one day. And I'm like, yes, and I'm like, I honestly, think you're right. I'm, I like, it. I'm taking him at his word here. And like, Matt, you and I were talking about this last night. And it just sort of, it hit us like a bolt because for years, like we've been wondering what comes after Trump. Because like he changed the game, but like the, the, the pretenders to the throne, you have to already be famous. Yes. And the thing about Kanye is that he's mega, mega famous. Hugely famous. He's hugely famous. He has the same affect as Trump in that he's, like, what interests him and excites him are the same things that Trump is interested in, yes. which is fashion and media. And, 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 he also and has this, just also from a point of view of total, like, black hole narcissism. Like, that's very key to it. Yeah. All of this is generated and, and also, by, like, he has, a mind same, devoted to the self completely. He has the same, like you said, catty, kind of, like, asexual mm -hmm. sort of, yes. uh, like, like, vibe to him. Yep. Like, it's just... Okay, but like now, now like that the Tucker interview was good enough, but like he kicked it off into the stratosphere with um, the Instagram post. And I guess the question is, does Kanye have the potential to be the black Hitler? Because he's going Deathcon three on the Jewish people. Jewish people. I, so uh, tough to say, right? Because it's like <laughs> you know we've talked about this how like the January six people are like a, a, a poor stand-in for the Fry Corps, who are just you know World War One veterans who are already dead. Yeah. Um, so I guess in this, like, in, in, in best possible conditions for Kanye being Hitler are that he has his own fry court. But that's like hip hop forum posters. Yeah. <laughs> who also they're not a very good fry court. Yeah. So I, I don't. The, the uniforms all include those insane, goofy, giant black boots that you can't even like. Yeah. Try running in those. Try running yeah. in one of those pairs of fucking shoes. Well, his Holocaust, like he would do it his way where he would like rent out a stadium and make like a replica of his mom's house and then <laughs> like make Marilyn Manson play a Jewish guy. And there, there'd be a whole ceremony where he tries to make like Kim come back for like a, a, a fake renewal of vows. And the, they'll kill Jews at a rate of like three per day. 
Yeah. They're never going to get into yeah, the millions. No, I mean, yeah. like, his attention spans a little too short. Yeah. Like, actual black Hitler, probably not. American context isn't the same. But the next conservative figurehead of, like, uh, the next figurehead of, like, conservative reaction turned into, like, a governing a political coalition. Uh, and I think that's possible. Now, the problem is, yes, he's super famous, but not famous among the old people who vote for Republicans. That's the big but problem. No, no, but but those people are dying right now. rapidly. I know, but he's fixing that right now because I think what makes it, what makes it such, such, a, such a powerful like, heir to the, 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 the mantle of Trumpism is that he's already mega famous, but he is taking these sort of um, anti-woke culture war stance. Like the well, white, that li- is crucial. Like, the, like the white that's lives matter. Like the white lives to, matter that's shirt. That's going to get buy-in from older but, people. But, but like crucially, he is doing it from someone who is on the, like the, the, the sort of like the media entertainment side of the cultural divide. He's conquered the realm of music, fashion, like entertainment. So he is, he is from the inside of the house making the call to the MAGA mem- mem- memas and pe- pep peps um, and telling them that everything that they think is true. Okay, I got one for you. Should is is it was it the the right thing to do or the exact ca- catastrophically wrong thing to do for Trump to put Kanye on the ticket if he gets the nomination? I I think that like I don't think the two of them could work together. No, they no they too can't. Much. They can't. <laughs> too much. Yeah, it's a hat can. on a hat on a hat. No, they can't. They can't. They can't because there would be instantly a falling out. Yeah, that's and true. I think like okay. What is Kanye he would do that if he was interested in a political project, which he isn't. Right, and Kanye Kanye's whole thing is. You know, you can tell that he's really mentally ill because he's oh, so yeah. annoying. Like, <laughs> what, like, what, like what, his his whole thing with his whole thing with Drake, his whole thing, his whole reason that he hates Drake in the first place is like, you have to help me. You abandoned me. He said, he says new thing with Drake is like, I thought you were my friend. Why weren't you doing anything when the Kardashians were kidnapping my children? And it's like, yeah, that sounds like a great thing to do to like just fucking to insert himself into a custody battle with a crazy guy to just go in and be like, I'm on this okay, guy's so side. Like- you know, people speculated that, that Trump ran for president because Obama was very mean to him at the correspondence dinner. I but like this is this is the, the, the kindling that will stoke a great fire. And I think there's a good chance Kanye wants to run for president to punish the Kardashian family. Yes. Or, yeah. So which I say. Have at it. Someone's got someone's got to someone's got to discipline those phonies. It's true. They're running wild. <laughs> yeah, but the, I mean, I guess Drake would be like whatever Democrat secret weapon. Oh, Dra- Drake really takes him out of his element. He's Canadian, though. He can never be president. Yeah, but he'll be. I don't know. He'll be like a Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Drake. Drake really brings out the worst in people. I'll tell you, if, if Kanye becomes president, uh, goodbye, Eurovan. That's all I know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's going to oh, be the God. end of our media as a country. He's going to just like actually join like Turkey and Azerbaijan. You know what the the the, the Kanye th- there are so many parallels to Trump, but like you know fit for his time and place in American culture and history. Trump's thing of being the best baseball player in New York, that's replaced by Kanye's maybe even funnier thing of claiming that he's a GD. Claiming that he's like a notorious gang member in Chicago. That is wild. hilarious. <laughs> I didn't know that. Hilarious. I didn't know that. You were in a room with a guy once. Like, that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, he's like, he claims he was like a GD growing up. And that's he's so like, he's rediscovered being a GD at like age 39 of course. after his second kid was born. Awesome. Um, I just, yeah. Yeah. By the way, just as an aside. I know, you know, we've often said that there should be some sort of rule banning anybody who uh, in journalism and punditry who is enthusiastically cheerleading the war in Iraq from ever talking about anything ever again because it's been disqual- they've been disqualified. I would argue a similar uh, rule should be applied to any cultural critic who spent the decade before the 2016 election insisting that Kanye is the greatest genius in human history. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, yes. like, I'm sorry. You're done. <laughs> You 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 were a dumb. A- How am I supposed to trust you when you were looking at this? Because I'm sorry, it's not like yes, obviously he was less you know cracked at that point, but just to look at what he was putting out, which is just this this monstrous performance of the self, and saying yes, this is politically meaningful. This is actually all politics is. You're done. Hit the showers. You blew it. Your take on Kanye determines what you think about black people. Your take on Kim determines what you think about women. Remember that. <laughs> Oh, God, that no, there's awesome. so many t- tweets that I would like to frame <laughs> of people talking about Kanye West in like 2012. Uh, remember all the f- fucking shitty memes where it's like Kanye on the uh, like a as a communist icon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Like the line of 
the line of communist leaders and it ends with Kanye. Yeah. That's good stuff. Oh, Christ. Well, I, I, got, I got an article. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Last thing. Um, one of a very annoying, like, pro Kanye person who, um, I won't say their name. It's someone people would recognize in academic. <laughs> the day that he and Kanye endorsed Trump, he very solemnly posted, wake up, Mr. West. <laughs> <laughs> one of the funniest things uh, uh, oh my God. And, and like, and he could have done. I, I have an article here about uh, about Kanye that I want to read in a second. But like, I, I think another thing that makes this very powerful is that like, it's very you cannot like you cannot be a celebrity, and this, like the same formula does not work for the Democrats because like if Kanye were to try to do like you know be, become like a Biden guy or run for president as a Democrat, let's be honest, they would buck break him. Oh yeah, they would yeah, absolutely yeah. buck break him. Whereas, like, there's so much more purchase for being, like, a, a black guy who's speaking truth, you know, who's, who's independent-minded, like, uh, from the Republican side. Like, it, it's just the, the calculation is all there for him. If, yeah. If he, want, if, he, if, he, if he can muster the attention span to do it. Well, well that's I, the real challenge. Is that everything, like, with, he's younger than Trump, so that means that his, uh, you know, his, his, uh, he's livelier, he's more likely, he's touchier. Can he, he, he handle the rigors of, like, pulling himself disciplining himself towards the goal of being president and that's the challenge but the path is there whether he can do it is another thing i all he has to do and it's going to be within a few months is just start putting everything together into a QAnon style uh attack on culture yes. plus celebrity from within from one who yes. experienced it from, from one, yeah, who, yeah. one who has like, conquered the world of celebrity and it's like i have seen them i have watched them dance i have seen i've seen them writing their name in the devil's book in the woods and once he does that, he has, he has the, the Republican Party base by their gonads, and he will lead them wherever the fuck he, he wants to take them. He's got to start gonna be, of course. He's got like, to do an album of all proofs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, Over the Instead edge. of skits on a rap album, it's just proofs. <laughs> <laughs> it just drops. The con if he like ran for president, his coalition would be so fucking weird mm -hmm. because it's okay. Like pretty much like no women, right? Mm, that would be tough. Yeah, that's a that's a huge obstacle in his way. But he very would, few he women. Be, he would depolarize. Is the thing he would racially yeah, depolarize. No, like, now you're talking about like this is this would this would so he would get a lot more with, men uh, with, from different races that wouldn't. He's gonna get so many. How many white black guys is he gonna get? How many Hispanic guys and and white guys from the Democratic pool well, like who, who said, are like, gonna be drawn is, to the the specific cultural message of like being a guy and dealing with these fucking women and their. Uh, Jewish people supporters. <laughs> How many? Yeah, can you win an election with like very few to no women? Well, we'll find that out. Interesting That's experiment. Tough. That's tough. All right. I, so I, I, I have an article here about the the Kanye West mega weekend. Uh, this is a uh, from the Jewish Chronicle, current cur courtesy of Dominic Green, who's a Wall Street Journal columnist. So, like, okay, before I start reading this article, which is by the way a defense of Kanye West in the Jewish Chronicle. <laughs> Can, can you guess what musician this author will use as a negative contrast to Kanye West? Roger Waters. Ding! <laughs> Ding. How did I know? <laughs> Easy. That was a meatball right around the center of the plate. Because I knew this guy was British. And for like <laughs> British Jews, like Roger Waters, Roger Waters is worse than Hitler. <laughs> Like he is, he is just their object, uh, object of hate. They, they do not. I think he could be their most hated guy on the planet. They really hate that guy. Yeah, more than He's, Corbin. Because, like, well, at this point, what other worlds are there to conquer? They've got everything tamed nicely. He, he just, he is the only guy who is like famous enough uh, and independently, you know, established enough in people's minds that they can't cancel his ass. Yeah. So that's why they're going crazy because he's not a guy who they can spend money against in a no, he doesn't have to run for a, in a primary to be the guy from pink floyd <laughs> yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. no way that they can upseat him that way so they just have to yell at him and more and more until i don't know someone's they're gonna send the Mossad guys to kill him who knows well he's like roger's like 81 too. that's what's so funny about it just the constant campaign to like remind people he's bad yeah all right so this is this is uh uh in the dominic green writing in the jewish chronicle headline ye gods give kanye west a break the road to rehabilitation is long, and if anyone can, Kanye can. Like, I just like, you know, the road to rehabilitation. Try to imagine if Roger Waters tweeted he's going Death Con 3 on the Jewish people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's also like, hasn't Kanye been on, like, a road to rehabilitation for, like, 15 years? 
I'm sorry, but it just isn't it always like I'm better now. <laughs> uh, okay, so the article begins. A few years ago, I went to see the Rolling Stones. Keith Richards had lately had another dear, another near death experience getting out of his tree, falling from a palm tree headfirst onto the beach. In fact, causing a cranial injury so severe that the doctors told him he could never take cocaine again. It seemed ominous, so I thought I'd see the Stones while the critical mass of them were still alive. The concert was at Foxborough, the giant stadium where the New England Patriots play. The support act was still on when we arrived, so we got as far away from the stage as we could. From the bleachers at the wrong end of the stadium, we could make out a little speck of a man running around on the stage and up and down the runway, waving his arms and shouting furiously. One of the things he kept shouting was his name, so eventually we realized we were listening to the rapper called Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> this was before Kanye West became Mr. Kim Kardashian. And then apparently having mislaid some of his marbles, a brand called Ye, because as he explained it to the radio host Big Boy in 2018, I believe Ye is the most commonly used word in the Bible. And in the Bible, it means you. So it's I'm you. It's us. It's us. Are you doing a bit there as him, or do you think that's how it's pronounced? Ye? Is it ye? Yeah, in the Bible, it's ye, I think. No, but Kanye, no, it's yeah, ye. But he, yeah, but his no name, he calls himself Is it ye? ye? Is it ye? Yeah, Felix. No, okay, yeah. but I, Kanye, I thought it was ye. No, yeah, well, when, when Kanye. Yeah, Kanye, 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 no, yeah, he's, he, when oh, he's well, called ye, he's ye. Well, yeah. I, I didn't know that. So in the Bible, it's ye. Jesus, I don't know. Yeah, because I thought it was Yeezy. No, he's never, but he's never called himself like ye. I don't know. I literally have never seen it said. I've only seen it written down. Same for every single word ever uttered on this. Uh, show. <laughs> this could, I, I, I only hear people talk about Kanye. I've never heard him referred to whatever, whatever the hell that diminutive is. Well, he okay. This is another reason why I think he might not be president. He changed his name to Ye and was like, everyone has to call me Ye, and no one did it. Like, well, you know, Trump I mean, had his annoying. bankruptcies. You know, you always kind of overshoot your gas, but then you got to regroup. But Trump's like not as annoying as him. Like I, I cannot. Yeah, but everybody is getting. Annoying but here's the thing, he though. Is. Everyone is getting more annoying every day, and therefore more inured to each other's annoyingness. No, no, day. opposite, opposite. No one, no one is more tuned in to how annoying other people are and talks about it more than the most annoying people. <laughs> right, but that's what draws them together: is that they all listen to each other complain about how everybody else is annoying. I think if there was a sustained thing. Every day he's on TV for hours and it just like his interests don't like stick, you know, like obviously. Well, that is they, true. Like Trump was able to create this like dog like relationship between like the way that dogs read human facial features. That's how he read like the crowd, like what they wanted, what they wanted to hear about. And so he found himself convincing himself that he cared about those things, too. Right. And can't Kanye doesn't, I think, have that kind of relationship with the audience yet. Because uh, he's less needy, frank, frankly. I mean, uh, in, in not in, at least not in the same way Trump is. He doesn't need to like pander to them. He's needier in a higher way, right? Right. He needs to be. Trump is needy in an immediate way. Kanye is higher in an, in a higher way, where he he has to be remembered as like a cultural figure than a historical figure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, he believes in God, which Trump doesn't. I think right. That's a yeah, difference. But it, it's always like it's always like a new thing, right? Like now it's Black Israelite stuff. Yeah. But before that, it's like oh, education. We should teach kids how to like make shoes in school. I'd like to know. And then like shoes. prison stuff. Uh, uh, that's something everyone says, and then when they actually do it, but it's, it's like making the, bread. If he does get people's <laughs> off, if he gets people on his side, he can also like Trump did convince people to care about what he cares about. So it's a it's a. It, it's a given flow, and I think that there is going to be some diffusion and some just brain uh, warping to the point where they of all this they decide to themselves that they care about what he cares. But there about. has to be there has to be like a bagging issue with Trump. Like, yeah, it was he's so important to his movement, obviously him personally and his personality. But immigration, immigration, immigration hooked people yeah, so it's fucking true. hard. He had immigration, but he, it, it was Trump the one was, issue. It was the one issue that like every Republican in the base cared about, and they felt like that no one, no one represented in D.C. and no one who could win the nomination ever talked about enough. Okay, but now he has Hollywood sickos, and I think that'll be the that's the that's the next step because it gets less and less, it gets more and more deterioratory, deterioratorialized as time goes on. Because obviously, immigration, you could say, oh, immigration is a crisis in America for X, y, for X, Y, and Z reasons. But as a cult, as a thing to vote about, it was totally detached from reality. It was just this ambient anxiety about being culturally unseated. This is now the even more abstracted version of that, 
It's it, it's like oh, it's not the it, the immigrants. It's the calls coming from inside the house. The enemy, just like Islam, it used to be Islamic terrorism. Terrorism that's gone. Now the enemy is within, and Kanye is now identifying it. Hollywood sickos though as something with like first of all there was like electoral success around immigration hawkishness that's like true. On, on 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 the state and senatorial level like people like tom tancredo but the hollywood sickos thing is more diffuse and there's less there's no there's no equivalent to like the wall yeah that you can put there that becomes your signature policy to right. answer it it is harder to make it concrete yeah Unless, without yeah. doing like without promising explicitly to do the q uh purges yeah uh, it's like hey the stuff you said was happening privately we're gonna do it publicly and i the system can't metabolize okay, that okay matt I think if if Kanye West found out that the three of us attended one of Virgil Abloh's Fashion Week after parties in New York City, <laughs> there's a good chance he would start the purges. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, continuing with the article, though, uh, he writes, as with the yay bit, the spellings are all original. Sadly, yay is no longer us. <laughs> okay, here, here was the tweet. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. It's the, I'm a bit sleepy tonight. It's such a funny way. To <laughs> he goes, and then he continues. Uh, the tweet continues. Uh, the funny thing is, I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew. Also, you guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda. Felix, once again, I think you are also right that Kanye's black Israelite turn is way more interesting than all his weepy gospel Christian music. Oh, my music. God, yeah. yeah. No, all the God shit was so boring. It was just like, when people acted like it was this great cultural turn, it's like, yeah, I've never seen a crazy musician like decide that they're Christian now. I've never seen that. Bob Dylan did that shit. Yeah, yeah they've yeah. all done it. They've all done it. But like, um, but this the black is Israelites, actually, yeah, this is yeah, actually I, something. I gotta say, shout out to the black Israelites, because when I was growing up in New York, they had, bar none, the best show on Channel 35 Public Access. It was the best talk show that's ever existed because half of it were, was videos of them on the street screaming at people, mostly Hasidic Jewish people. And then the other <laughs> yeah. half of the show was call-ins where they would scream at people from a studio. <laughs> they, he should bring that show back. But okay, another, another unfulfilled. He didn't go Death Con 3 on Jewish people. He woke up. And it's like, you know, he's like, oh, they did cancel culture. That's DEFCON 3? Well, remember, DEFCON 3 is only the middle uh, def defense condition between 1 and 5. So, I mean, I don't know where he was before. So maybe he went uh, up to 3 from 2, in which case he's relaxing his uh, feelings of hostility towards the Jewish people. I think he got hit with a fucking trank dart. It is funny because I kind of wonder if he just he was realized, wait a minute, is 1 or 5 the bad one? And then he <laughs> couldn't remember, so he just put I'll be safe. I'll say the middle one. That's this, that's smart. This yeah. just seems like a thing he'll give up on. I'm sorry. I just as someone who's observed him, as someone who likes a lot of his music and is, you know, um, is familiar with the man. This seems like a thing in a year. He'll be like, I didn't do that. Well, it depends, though. It depends. It depends hugely on the response that he gets. Yeah. If if he if there is a concerted effort to, like, drive him out of mainstream, like a uh, uh, celebrity then he's got nowhere else to go at that point. And he kind of right, has yeah. to double down on That's it. That's the only card say, he can uh, play. Yeah. The, the reactions I've seen this morning from some of the people angry at Kanye who have all taken to pointing out that Kanye has more Twitter followers than there are Jewish people in the world. They're not exactly making the best case. For Seriously. Yeah, it's, well, like, okay. it's like that's the thing. When, when you're chosen, there, you know, there aren't a lot of you. <laughs> I mean, it's the whole it's it's supply and demand, you know, the, the value the scarcity increases value that's pretty common sense i uh, i read this thing about how they um quantify that and then there's like core jews that's like i guess both parents but then there's stuff called like um um na like jewish adjacent and like extended jewish universe oh, hell no. i'm, in, like the one I'm in the extended yeah, jewish yeah. universe that's you're in that yeah, <laughs> yeah. um i think you're no, in there no, i think you're the, there if you have if you've seen every coen brothers movie yeah <laughs> done <laughs> done and done um no like another example of that that what you're talking about felix is uh my favorite my favorite sports columnist and rotund gentleman jason whitlock they were like, he's like, oh, like you, like you, he, people were like, oh, he can't cross this line. And people were like, what line are you talking about? And he's like, the way non religious Jewish people, like, are, yeah, you know, and, and, or control of the media or like, blah, 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 like, you know, classic anti Semitism, but with this new distinction that is, again, very important for the right wing now between 
non-Jewish Jewish yes. people yeah. and religious Jewish people because religious Jewish people are very right wing. Yes. And like they're the allies, but you still need Jewish people as this internalized threat and enemy that is like the the the, the lodestar of the like, you know, yeah, the, the lodestar for like a kind of like, yeah, anti-Semitic culture war about yeah. like they, you know, they control the media and like are degenerating our culture or whatever. Yeah, it's it's the mutation of like the Zionist Jew versus the non-Zionist or ambivalent Jew. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same framework as and, that. So that way you can you can you can uh, inoculate yourself against accusations of anti-Semitism because you're like, no. I, I'm friends with, I'm actually considering myself quite close to many religious Jewish people, but the 90% of Jews in America who are generally secular, they're, 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 they're pigs and dogs. But that, that, that's why I think it's a non-starter, is because the only guy who followed him was Jason Whitlock, who's like <laughs> the dumbest the man on the planet. He's like, any he's not, stupid, yeah, he jumps they're on. They're not bringing their best there. He jumps on every stupid, he thinks every stupid thing is the next thing. He's like, oh, we're... Uh, we're gonna make a, a an anti woke red lobster on it. Uh, we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna make a hospital that doesn't serve atheists on it. Like he just any non starter Whitlock's fat ass jumps on it. Um, uh, speaking of like uh, similar uh to, to the 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 anti woke red lobster, uh, did you see um. Kanye's friend Candace Owens um, shilling for like the anti woke bank. Yeah, it's already gone. Oh, yeah, already, yeah, <laughs> yeah. already collapsed. And she was just like, "Watch out, Wells Fargo and Bank of America." What do you think they were offering? Is they were going to offer debit and credit cards that were made out of the same material as uh, pistol shell casings, like gun that's so bullets. Like, that's, that's so awesome. based. Like, just you're. This is for babies. <laughs> And apparently, though, oh, oh, that doesn't actually work. You weren't it's actually scanned in a yeah. credit card machine. Doesn't go with yeah. the machine, you fucking <laughs> morons. Could you put, like, a uh, friend's? On your card, I bet you could have a friends card with oh. a friend card, a friend card with little friends on the card. That is worth it. Like not having FDIC. Yeah, <laughs> that's worth it to me. Yeah, I'm willing to take the gamble. Yeah, yeah. imagine the, the bank is capitalized on NFTs completely. <laughs> imagine I. That's my dream is going to the grocery store at like 6 p.m. and holding up an entire line of single moms trying to put my gunmetal card in that won't scan that is like run it again yeah run it again <laughs> yeah it just has it just has like fucking friends all over it <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> little creepers for the spot so it gets stuck <laughs> you find to pull it out they gotta get a, pl a pliers just everyone's fucking hissing at me <laughs> oh man i wish it was real uh, back to the article uh, West meant DEFCON 3, the U.S. military's term for being halfway to a nuclear, nuclear launch. But also halfway from yeah. not having a nuclear yeah, launch. Okay. okay. So, perfectly positioned. Uh, he has had a busy time, beginning with wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt at a fashion show in Paris last week. Some might think that a fashion show in Paris is exactly the right place to wear something daft and tasteless. But the slogan, the ADL says, is associated with white supremacists. West then went fully postal last week on Instagram to his 18 million followers and gave a two-part interview on Tucker Carlson's show on Fox. West told Carlson that Jared Kushner had manipulated Donald Trump and organized the Abraham Accords for personal advantage. Yeah, he's got to sell buildings. Yeah, yeah. got to sell some buildings. I mean, yeah, that was a coincidence. That whole thing where he went into uh, they went into office with him having this gigantic zillion dollar white elephant building, and then he, he's doing these accords. Six six six. Park and then Avenue. all of a sudden, the Gulf, the Gulf, one of these Gulf uh, hedge funds just fucking takes us off his hands. That's a coincidence. And what are you to come on? Right. I mean, like, it would be disappointing if Jared Kushner did anything that wasn't in his personal interest. Yeah, what else are you doing there? Yeah. Man? Sticking to geopolitics, he said that the media want Lizzo, a portly flautist noted for showing her bottom <laughs> in public. A portly flautist. <laughs> to stay okay. fat in the name of the demonic idea that stuffing your face is healthy. I mean, hasn't Kanye had, like, lipo done? He's had some of the most He's had a lot of lipo, like like micro, little, micro lipo yeah. ever done the on thing a man. Is, this is all how it's all... It's all yelling into a mirror and it's all narcissism. He's looking pretty swole these days himself. His neck is looking pretty fat. I think he might be feeling a little insecure. I think the opposite. I think he looks, um, he got like facial micro lipo. That's what it looks like to me from the interview. I, I've never, I guess I wouldn't know how to recognize facial micro lipo. I've never seen Would it. Would you just compare it to older pictures of him? No, I noticed it. Okay. Um, why do you think they would want to promote unhealthiness, Carlson asked, as the host of the most popular cable show in America? He is as much the media as anyone is. It's a genocide of the black race, West explained. They want to kill us any way they can. 
see, this is why he's going to, this is where it could happen. Because obviously you have to deracialize that, but and have to turn it into the greater, you know, narrative about culture uh, destroying us. But it's that same activated uh, paranoia on among Republicans that they're being sought for destruction for their identities when in fact they are being immiserated universally by the relentless grind of capitalism. No, they don't want it. They don't want to genocide black people, but the thing that makes money involves pumping out as much fucking cheap calories as possible in a way that will guarantee that people get obese and that the obesity is concentrated at the lowest levels of the socioeconomic level, which means it will concentrate around racial minorities and specifically black people. That is a guaranteed outcome of that result. But that's not the reason they're doing it. Right. Where they already did that. Yeah. They already pumped the poorest communities full of the worst food that wouldn't even be served to fucking pigs in the European Union. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is post facto. And yeah. then, like, you, you know, it. you can look at like health outcomes in this country and like begin to wonder why black men across the board have like the worst health outcomes in every fucking like yeah. stroke, heart disease, yeah. diabetes, like, yeah. you know, across the board. Yeah. And it's just frustrating because because we can't talk about the structures, we cannot talk about. Uh, the, the reproducing structures that govern our lives, like the capitalist relations that make everything the way it is, we can only look at a culture that's coping with that and then decide that its signals are what's making us do it. So like, even if you accept the notion that, oh, these ads are trying to make people uh, say it's okay to be, these ads are there to tell people it's okay to be fat, it's because, well, you know, if everyone's fat, why not, why not make them not feel bad about it, you know? Yeah. Like, that's the impulse that governs everyone through that chain of thinking that gets to that. It's not, we want people to die. It's, well, look, they're dying anyway. Everyone's fat as hell anyway. We can't do anything about that. Right, and Maybe we're, we could make them feel better about it. We're gearing towards a future where, like, only, only, like, the middle highest earners are not fat. Yeah. So we might as well, we might as well, like, try this sort of half-baked combination of, like, academic and culture stuff where right. you get, like, the Nabisco professor of body positivity. Oh, yeah, that who, like, was... Yeah, right, yeah. right writes fucking, <laughs> writes so fucking yeah, research papers that are like, no, you naturally, like, want to fuck someone who's 700 pounds. I gotta say, that was demonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Insane. Lady from the, Insane. Yeah. From the There's no Oreo such thing as good company? or bad food. Oh. oh, my fucking God. And, like, look, yeah, in a moral sense, like, no. I don't well, think that's like, the thing. Yeah. Everything is conflated. No, I don't think one. anyone's yeah. a bad person no. for being... Yeah, no, but, like... The, yeah, there's, it, a, there's a difference between food that is healthy and unhealthy in terms of like the nutrition it provides but your our body. Entire, our entire social order is reproducing things, that, us doing things that are bad for us. Yeah. If not just eating food, but voting, participating in society that it's is destroying the it's goddamn world. You. It's all bad for you. <laughs> so I think like the thing that's what's frustrating is that the there is an impulse among all of this racial panic and gender panic that generates these movements. A desire to like rip the VR headset off of us, basically. The recognition that like, oh, like all the things that we think are helping us cope with the world we're in are actually also like connecting us to it and making us unable to do anything else. So we gotta like destroy it. But you can't because it's set on top of a thing that generates it. And politics, the thing that politics is supposed to do, which is a a, a disciplining structure that subordinates your basest instincts into like coordinated action towards a goal, not just getting your, uh, uh, not just uh, relieving the sense of like anxiety that you have for living a life that is terrifying and alienating. No, directing that somewhere. That instinct is supposed to pull action towards the causes, towards the structures, but we don't have that political pull anymore. So everything is getting towards this frantic, culture-wide clawing away at like the goggles to try to get them off our face. It's like the if the they live glasses, if you only saw like a half a layer deep. Yeah, if exactly. You, like like all the like all the body positivity and like fat acceptance stuff. A lot of it is just like it immediately goes to like the moral idea because yeah. that is that is the basis and only way that we can see things. Like people are obsessed with. Uh, calling media bad because they can't figure out if the protagonist is supposed to be good or bad immediately uh, with the, the, the obesity stuff. It immediately goes to like, is a, is an obese person a good or bad person? Yes. If you're on the other side of it, if you're on like the now politicized conservative side of it, it it's like, no, you're a bad person. You're yes. a drug addict. If you're obese. Yes. A and the other side of it is going so far in the other direction not just are, are are you not a bad person if you're obese, which is the base truth you're working with. 
you're a bad person if you don't become that, if you're yes. not immediately desiring that. Yes. Like if you don't think, if you think this is unhealthy or like fucked up in any way, if, if you point out that obesity rates have skyrocketed since the nineties, did everyone's genetics change if nothing's being done to the food? Yeah. Uh, then you, you are a bad person. And that is, that is the, that is the half a layer of illusion taken away. Yeah. Trying to look at it. And then if you're on the other side of that, it's like, okay, then I'm a bad person according to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to flip your values because obviously they're wrong if I don't think I'm a bad fucking person because of that. And me, I'll be determined to be a bill. And, and me, yeah, meanwhile, no one really talks about like what food companies do to our food. No. What like anything related to agribusiness. Can't it's discuss all just, it. Yeah, it's all just, you know, what, what's in Sports Illustrated. Yep. Yep. What, it's like we are trying to determine like who is going to be like the, uh, the, who is going to host? Who is going to be the Lorne Michaels of America? Like that's what we're, imagine we're voting on. It's like who gets to program SNL each week? Who gets to put on things and then we get to de- and that and uh, evaluate like an aesthetic assemblage, like fat and black or whatever and disabled. That's good. Or uh, you know the old Aryan ideal is good. And then we're gonna fight over what we should be watching every day. Gambo. We should be watching Gambo. We should be folks. watching Gambo, mm-hmm. folks. Finally, some Gambo. I gotta last tell you, finally some Gambos happening. Since the time jumps. Uh, I'm enjoying that. That uh, ever since they started jumping forward in, in time a lot, uh, I'm getting more Gambo. There's more Gambo esque hijinks. Okay. When that dude got his head cut off out of nowhere, that, t- that, that was, was tight. Oh, yeah. Matt, Chris, and I were all watching it. We all turned to each other. We had, a Gambo has That's occurred. Gambo. A Gambo a, has 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 finally occurred. A wild Gambo has emerged. Should I start watching it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, you love the lore, watch. and yeah. there's tons you like of lore. lore. Yeah. Like that, there's the, a little in joke thing where like a uh, there, there's a, a line of uh, potential suitors for uh, for the princess, and uh, a little a, a young Blackwood and a Bracken get in a fight, and one of them kills the other one. And it's like, hey, okay. you guys, we all love the those those feuding families from the Riverlands, the okay. Brackens and the Blackwoods. We love them, folks. That sounds good. I mean, I have to stop watching SVU. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you watching like classic Christopher Maloney era? Oh, SUV, of course, SVU? of course. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm not watching like the new guy with Donald the, Logue. What's and... the, the guy, the guy, fu- the guy fucks Mariska Hargitay. Yeah, yeah a lowly, supposed, yeah. a lowly cop fucks her. <laughs> <laughs> Should be a New York Yankee or a prince. <laughs> Just a fucking guy who makes sixty thousand dollars a year at most. <laughs> Fuck you. The Aaron Judge. Disgusting. Yeah, I hated it. Hated when they did that. Awful. So, but, you're, so you mean you're you're transitioning from your uh, your white woman uh, media consumption m- era when you were doing cr- true crime YouTubes and Law and Order SVU? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just become a white woman. Yeah. Well, you I think I'm, I think I'm gonna, gonna be, a dog, man. I'll be worried about you. I think I'm gonna be trafficked soon. <laughs> Check your door handles. Yeah. When you go oh my into the god! Ball, you, you saw that, 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 that TikTok was yeah. so good. But okay, the, the 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 zip tie on on the the the, the side mirrors or the door handle—that's a classic one I heard before. But the what the, the the new the new uh, the the new evolution of trafficking techniques that I was not aware of in this TikTok was putting some sort of like fentanyl pouch in the door <laughs> handle. So that when, yep. so when you touch it, you get like whoa! Yep. Like you pass out or yep. whatever. Yep. Oh yep. man! Imagine a squeegee guy accidentally touching the fentanyl part on your car and just, just getting, collapsing and then, no, no, in the not intersection getting and getting right for the day <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh man feeling great he just whistles <laughs> walks away that's the funniest thing about like that fentanyl shit it's like wouldn't like wouldn't there just be like a million people dying every day if it just kills you on it's contact Havana like syndrome that? baby every we have a collective Havana yeah. syndrome where you want to call it anything you want to call it any name you give it it's the same thing the the, the tendrils are buzzing with the coming apocalypse <laughs> we have no uh, cultural language to discuss that so it gets f- p- suppressed and sublimated into physical symptoms and then narratives around those symptoms and that's now our politics yeah uh for podcasters of course the havana syndrome is ibs <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's true <laughs> it do be true not me though my, <laughs> totally BMs are, my bms are like a fucking swiss watch well, like, bully for you. <laughs> Mine have been really bad since the Ned Fulmer incident. <laughs> uh, this is like when I told Cumtown, I know, I've never had erectile dysfunction or needed blue chews. <laughs> they, they, they're they, fun to take just sometimes. <laughs> I've never, never done it. Yeah, it's, like, it's like doing batting practice with a cork bat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently, the, I didn't see it. I will see it before the week is out. But uh, there was the new SNL in this season be, de- debuted Saturday. Brendan Gleeson, right? Yes, Brendan Gleeson, lovable Irish him. lug. 
Uh, I'll sit, I'm sure I'll enjoy it with quotation marks. Uh, mm-hmm. But apparently there was a sketch about the fi- the Fall Guys, the Fry Guys, the Try Guys. <laughs> The Try Guys are on SNL, the like as a reference. Yeah, no. This is you got to put the phones down and find out like what it's like to like go to a deli and think of something funny that happens in an interaction imagine, you have imagine if in you your will. human life. Mm-hmm. Imagine if you will, an adherent to the Bushido code of samurai, but he worked at a deli. <laughs> yeah, see now we're talking. What if your neighbors had large peaked heads? And talk like robots. <laughs> what if that was a thing? How would you deal with it? What if you knocked? What if you opened the door one time and there was a shark? These are questions that you need to be asking yourself. You need to put on a fucking Doobie Brothers record, smoke some fucking Maui Waui, nothing above mids, and just talk out the episode instead of w- putting your fucking uh, Twitter screen next to your uh, uh, Netflix page and then destroying your brain with the most powerful THC ever devised. <laughs> A fucking uh, yeah, leave that M- to me. Putting leave MK me. Ultra podcast, strain resins SNL. in your head and just watching your screen all week and then getting ideas out of that. That's, yeah, that's what Touch I do. Touch fucking grass. Seriously, it's the sketches could be about anything, man. You have to have it. Literally, they've never done anything else. They went. They they like people writing for SNL now. They went from school to SNL probably. Like they went to school, then they went to like. Uh, college maybe they did a fu- couple years but doing stand up and, and then in this shit see they never had a real motherfucking job i, I think i, mean, I, 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 I haven't either obviously but it's like this is a this is, has its own effects everywhere i, per, I perceive like a like, you know like you could say like oh like the weed's too strong now but i, I perceive a similar uh shift in drug-induced creativity in in, in film and television that you that plays out according to you know according to the plot in snl the shift from cocaine mm-hmm. classic era SNL yes. where they were fucking doing races That's down fucking correct. desk tables they were doing a yard of cocaine to Adderall yeah so, yes yeah like you have all the, the it's the okay I got, a subs- of work, I got a prescription for this but none of the feelings of godlike euphoria yeah because it's not illegal it's got to be illegal baby you got to have your PA go and meet a guy at, at in the in the in the cafeteria at Rockefeller Center uh Back to the Kanye West article. (laughs) Uh, West is now suspended from Twitter and Instagram for anti-Semitic statements. The president of Iran is still holding for it. (laughs) So I had to get that in there. I had to get that in there. They do love, they do like, like British Zionists love that. Like being like, why does Khomeini still have an account? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Twitter's banned in Iran. How come this asshole has a Twitter account? Yeah. Yeah. How's he to ban evasion of his own country? It is. It, you'd think that that would be part of the sanctions that we've had on that country since the hostage crisis. You know. Yeah. Like you can't have. You can't be on our Twitter. What the fuck? Uh, West is possibly an, under sedation too. In 2016, he was diagnosed with bipolar disorder after being hospitalized. His manic outbursts have long been the subjects of cruel jokes. It is crueler still for Fox News to put on air as someone who is plainly ill. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that really, really, really a real breach of morality from Fox News. Imagine if they put someone insane on <laughs> television. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. I like how that that's what crosses the line from them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exploiting the mental illness of this entertainer on uh, for Tucker Carlson. Yeah, that's that's a bridge too far, Fox News. You fought, yeah. Also, like like crazy famous people like that. That's how they heal. Is by going on TV. It's That's true. why they, they go talk again. it out. It's therapy. Yeah, they go on TV after they have an outburst. Yeah, like my, my favorite TV appearance of all time, Michael Richards. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, with, on, with Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. The, the Afro American. It's not funny. Community. Yeah. When, oh, I'm sorry. It is the funniest yeah. thing ever. Maybe. <laughs> that, that was, so that, fucking good. Seinfeld is a piece of shit as a human. Obviously, I mean the fact that he collects cars is all you need to know. If, you, if you're a comedian who makes a bunch of money, if you're a kind of entertainer who makes a bunch of money, and then you're left with the existential question, what do I do with this giant pile of gold? The answer is buy a bunch of little cars. You're a fucking piece of shit. But nothing, and obviously the 17-year-old, the guy, he's dicey. But to me, the grossest thing he ever did was when fucking Kramer drops the N-word and then goes to apologize and starts talking about the Afro-American community. Oh, my God. This asshole's going to yell at this crowd and say, it's not funny. Fuck off, dude. That's yeah, funnier yeah. than anything Jerry Seinfeld has ever done on stage. ever done in his life. Yeah. That was probably the greatest TV appearance of all time. Yeah, you got to talk it out. And so he, I think if he gets a few more interviews, he'll like calm down again. But then it's going to get ramped up. Like and We're all on a roller coaster. We're all we're all living like by the whims of these uh, these guys at the top who are getting more and more normal every day. 
Well, you do like interviews for celebrities or like detox. Like you start out on like a something close to what you get on the streets, which is uh, Tucker Carlson. Yeah. But then when you're like you're weaning off, you go with something light like Meredith Vieira. <laughs> and we'll know he's cured when he's like doing that. Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, here, here's where we get into, you know, if Felix called the shot early on quite accurately. So here's where he gets into Roger Waters. Compare West to Roger Waters who turned up over the high holy days in an interview with Rolling Stone magazine. Waters, who insists, insists he has nothing against Jews, only the existence of Israel, said that British and American Jews bear responsibility for Israel's actions because they pay for everything. I'm sure that's a very good faith uh, reprint of what he actually said yeah. in the interview. I'm sure he said exactly that. Roger Waters, who will always be a delusional bigot, but Kanye West, who has performed in Israel, will recover from his delusions and their bigotry. Oh, OK. OK. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a good person. OK. I mean, that's the thing is, as long as Israel is long- is affirmed and can exist, then who gives a shit how anti-Semitic any particular person is outside I'm of not- Israel? Because, oh, no, they do anti-Semitism. What'll, la- what'll happen then? Jews come to Israel. Oh, we'd hate for that to happen. Well, yeah, also, turn, that's, also- how, that's how you realize that they don't actually think Roger Waters is anti-Semitic. Otherwise, they would love it. Exactly. <laughs> And also, they want to scare the Jews out of the West to Israel to win the demographic war. They're yep, in. yep. I said the same with Kitty Helper just last week. But yeah, like, and, and also though, if, if as long as you support Israel, you can say anything you yeah. want about Jewish people. That's in this lovely. Country. You're, sh- yeah. you're shaking. Yeah. Yeah. You're shaking the board towards the the bottom. You know, you're getting all the crumbs together. But if you if you're against Israel, then they they can't have a state. They can't have their nukes. They can't defend themselves against the rest of us. He says he deserves a break. You could see the pain on his face as he told Carlson, if we saw ourselves as people and not a race, then we would treat our our, our people better. That is the American problem in a nutshell. The road to rehabilitation is long. There will be meetings with rabbis, a trip to the Western Wall, and another high-profile interview to apologize about the previous one. If anyone can, Kanye can. Just ye watch. Okay, so this is a question. Is that going to happen? Is he going to do the full walk back? Because if he's going to get healed... He's going to have to do something publicly to exemplify it. Would he have, does he have to go to Israel? Does he have to go to the wall? If he does do it, it is going to be couched in that. Yeah. It's going to be like, look, I like Israel. Yeah. And then then maybe, yeah, then maybe he is running for president. Hmm. We'll see. Yeah. So if he, if he is able to uh, accept that those terms, then we might be seeing the stirrings of the, of the, next, the next link in the chain. Damn, he, I feel like Black Hitler. You know what? <laughs> I wish I could find this the best screenshot ever of the guy going like, everyone Google this. We're the real Jews. And then the first comment under his Facebook status is, can you just like come pick up your daughter? Because <laughs> that really is, it's a, a microcosm of what's going on here. I think we need some more lost tribes of Israel. Yeah, we need to, we need to go out and find some more. The Irish. Some have claimed. I've I've heard that Some one. Yeah. I don't really. Uh, there, there's agree also with it. the Anglo's. The Anglo's our, our, claim. Our friend Elron Mexico uh, said the Cajuns were also a lost tribe of Israel. <laughs> you have to. I don't know. You have to get real at some point. <laughs> the uh, the Anglo Saxons claim that too that they're a lost tribe, and of course uh, the Mormons believe that the Indians are a tribe of Israel. Okay, at, at this point, it's like there are more people who are Jewish than are not. Yeah. Well, that I mean that can solve anti-Semitism. You know Chinese, what? Honestly, the Chinese. Yeah. Okay. Lost tribe uh, of Israel. I honestly have never heard the Han put forward as the lost tribe of Israel, though. That's a good one. Got to get those numbers up. The they, only people they're going to have to find some more lost tribes if they want to, yeah, keep it keep it going. The only people who both like have never claimed this, and you know, I could actually see would be the Basques mm-hmm. because like no one knows where they came from. It's true. They got the language. Yeah, that language. It's out of nowhere. Yeah. No. No other uh, connections. It's very interesting. No Indo-European roots. Yeah. Their language is awesome. Yeah. They put X's wherever. They go ham. <laughs> I go ham them. with them. X's. They got the little guy, the divot guy above yeah. the, the la- eye. Like, oh, it's like, oh, you thought there'd be a dot? Uh, wrong, bitch. <laughs> it's a tiny <laughs> little you. <laughs> well, I, for one, welcome the Kanye Imperium. I think yeah. it's going to be awesome. I'll I wear support, I support when we all Kanye have to regime. wear those stupid foam insulation shoes. Okay, okay. Look. Like and 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 the tracksuit. I'll be fine. I'll you be. Know, I'll have a great pe- time. People, people get very sensitive about music. So I'll just say this: Can we agree? That his clothes and shoes are like the shittiest thing anyone's Awful. ever created. Like the Awful. ugliest clothes and shoes anyone has ever conceived of. I, they look bad, yeah. I gotta <laughs> they say. Look really, not, they look I'm, like shit. I probably like his music, you know, more than anyone out of the three of us. But like his clothes suck shit. They're fucking terrible. They look like shit that they wore on the ship in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Wear it to the rave. Yeah. 
We're into the God. Zion rave. Yeah, just dog shit. I liked a lot of Donda, but the, yeah, the shoes are stupid. Uh, I'm going to get a pair in anticipation so that uh, when, when the Pol Pot regime yeah, yeah. <laughs> comes in there and they're shooting anybody who's not wearing Yeez, <laughs> I'll be okay. Uh, it's an all hype beast army. Bunch of just decked out clods. Uh, in light of the long knives, but for Gap executives. Yep. I am... I think Mandy Moore would beat him in an election. <laughs> Mandy Moore. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. Well, she's on This Is Us, right? She's on, she's this, on is this Is Us. us. See, the yeah. thing is, they need a celeb, but the problem is they can't get one. and They're not raising one in time, and it's a catastrophe. Like They need Matthew McConaughey yesterday, or The Rock. They're really in trouble. They need someone to answer that. They need someone to answer Kanye. because it's Mandy no Moore. <laughs> why, why Mandy that, Moore? Where are you getting Mandy Moore from? She's on This Is Us. <laughs> she's a woman. And like she's just, she always seems to be just be in this like pleasant haze. Mm -hmm. And if Kanye's up there just like screaming about like whatever topic he's on by that election, you know, where see you, if we did have a socialist movement in this country with any kind of organizational institutional heft, it would be Marianne Williamson. But sadly, we don't live in that world, so we're gonna get some like off-brand Hollywood Hillary. It's not gonna be good. What about Taylor Swift running against Kanye? Oprah Winfrey. Mm. Mm, Oprah would be the clo that she's she's the closest to like a, a, a democratic. I Trump. think it's Oprah, really. Yeah, maybe. What about oh. Diane Feinstein? <laughs> 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 I think she's still got room for one last job. Honestly, that would make <laughs> that sense. Would still be so I mean, that is good. the next step from like Biden. Would if if it's, if it's just the continuing dissolving of the Democratic Party to its pure machine parts. Then who's next? Nancy Pelosi? Would she have to be the next uh, candidate? You have to an exoskeleton. You have to admit it would be really funny if Kanye lost by like nine points to Diane Feinstein, and then she just <laughs> fucking like, dies. We're like, look, I just didn't think I, I didn't think Jesus was a banger. I'm sorry, I'm not voting for him. I'm, ve I'm voting for Mecca Feinstein. I okay. I honestly think um, Christ is King foreclosed any possibility of him ever being president. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. I I, I do. All right. Well, I, I hope we can find our place in the Kanye, the, the Kanye regime. I'm, I'm already preparing myself. I'm sorry for going to Virgil Abloh's party and ruining it. <laughs> 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 All right. Till next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Plug yeah. Plug the dates. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plug yeah, the dates. This. OK. If you didn't get a chance to see this in L.A., you will still have two opportunities to see us this Friday, the 14th. We are in the Town Hall Theater in New York. That's right. Chuppo on Broadway. On Broadway. And then the week after that, we're going to be at Revolution in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, musical guests in New York will be 95 Bulls and Donzie in Fort Lauderdale. Very much looking forward to those. Donzie? <laughs> oh, wow. So last two dates on our fall tour, Chicago and L.A. have been fucking awesome. Really looking forward to New York and Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I on a bit of a pedantic note. These shows have been great, but uh, we got a lot of stuff to get through. We got the uh, the band is not really an opener. They're just playing a few songs and they play later. So don't don't show up like thirty minutes late thinking you're going to skip the opener. If you're not there like by ten minutes after the show starts, you're going to be missing significant portions of the show. So show up on time for these. If you don't show up on time, you should kill yourself. Chris is going to find you and spank your bottom red, bright red. That's an incentive for people. To go <laughs> That's it. true. Never mind. No, he's never going to do that. I will hold the he's holding the spankings. <laughs> spankings for prompt boys only. <laughs> instead of doing a signing line, everybody who's there like five minutes before the show starts, I will do a spanking line instead afterwards. That would take so long. <laughs> <laughs>